I love Margate. And that's the great thing about Margate, you just don't know what to expect, and that's a part of this charm. I love it, mate. I love it. It's not like a small town thing. Living in Margate is great. Like, I love it. Despite its fame and notoriety, Margate has not always been the height of art and tourism during its turbulent past, and while I want to briefly discuss Margate's history as it is important to understand why Margate is the way it is today, this documentary is not about Margate's history, it's about Margate's present and its future, and to show the realities of living in a seaside town which is once again becoming a centre of tourism for the UK. As I previously mentioned, Margate was an extremely popular tourist destination in England from the early 18th century where originally the sea was a place people came to bathe for medical reasons. Then, as it developed, people started travelling to Margate for leisure, which was only increased in, the, in 1880 with the opening of Benbon Brothers, now called Dreamland. Well, I was a 70s baby, um, and so I grew up in Margate in its heyday. Um, Margate, um, you know, it, it had its fun fair and lots of other attractions in the area and it was a wonderful place to live. It was also a number one hotspot for a tourist destination. Margate stayed one of Britain's favourite seaside resorts until the late 1960s, when, as a result of the increased disposable income and the availability of holidays abroad, meant Margate fell somewhat out of fame. Well, I mean, my earliest memories of it, I came here with my parents when I must have been, you know, in the, possibly the late 70s, early 80s, and it was, you know, busy, and you know, there's all the arcades and you know, it's traditional seaside town. And then I remember coming in the eighties, like maybe towards the late eighties, I had a mate that moved down here from where I was living, so we'd come down and skate down here and it was especially Margate, but I mean Thanet as a whole, you could kinda of see that it had its best days, like it was on the there was a lot of empty property and businesses and you know, Dreamland was shut and a lot it was just getting a bit it was definitely like on a downward spiral. Soon Margate was trapped in a vicious cycle. As less tourists came to Margate, it received ever dwindling investment, which led to reduction in quality and number of facilities, and the cycle continued. Alright, if I'll be brutally honest, Margate it was nice. Um I think when we used to have like the clubs open on the seafront and you had sort of three or four pubs down there, you know, people had stuff to do and places to go. But slowly the clubs shut down and it sort of killed Margate Seafront. And I think that's why you have a little bit more trouble because people don't have nothing to do anymore. They can't go anywhere or if you have to go anywhere, you've got to travel. And not everyone can, in this climate, not everyone can afford to travel. This also meant that due to the rising number of empty or closed hotels, there was a ready supply of buildings for either cheap or social housing. This meant Margate was slowly becoming deprived, as the money it once had from tourism was gone and the increased amount of social housing meant it fell into disrepair. However, due to the Turner opening in 2007 and Dreamland reopening in 2015, Margate is back on the rise. Despite the old town being one of Margate's most deprived areas after its fall from grace, many businesses have chosen to open there, which has led to a swell of London business owners cornering the re-established tourism market. So I'm Callum, uh, Callum Regan, owner of uh, obviously Old Town Partners Margate. Um, my association with Margate is uh, my girlfriend's from Margate. I've worked and lived in London for quite a while, always loved the place, and yeah, so, so that's my association with Margate. Uh, so, my name is Thomas Ericsson, I'm 40 years old, and uh, I moved to Margate in 2016. And what made you originally move to Margate or run a business in Margate? Uh, definitely seen a niche in the market. Margate's really up and coming at the moment. Um, a lot of Londoners obviously moving down here and I, I see a little bit of a gap in Margate for in the market even for a more London style barbershop. And do you believe Margate is becoming more gentrified? And if so, do you believe it's a problem for the people who live here? It's definitely become more gentrified, even in, this, even in the five, six years I've been here. Uh, I think it's a problem for the people who doesn't want to doesn't change. 
think I think the, the local people who live here before and who are interested in changing and, and, and better their lives and opening their own business, etc. I think gentrification is a good thing. I mean, definitely. As I mean, it's a hard thing to say. It's definitely getting gentrified because of the sort of businesses that are starting to open up here. But isn't that how a, a town kind of grows and progresses and? Uh, so that's a hard question to answer because I feel like the town's really come to life again and it used to be a great affluent town full of great things and great businesses and it kind of dropped off sort of the 80s and 90s and I feel like it's kind of just coming back into what it should be rather than gentrified for the first time. While lots of London owned businesses opening in Margate may seem like a good thing as it boosts the local economy, the DFL's down from London influence has not been entirely positive. And do you believe Margate is becoming more gentrified? And if so, do you believe this is a problem for the people who live here? It is, but what I find is that with the some of these, uh, what they call them, DFLs, down from London, that come down here, a lot of the, the ones I've met, there have been a couple of them and they've been quite attitude-y and they think that they are better than the people that live down in Margate. And what they don't realise is that some of the people that they can be attitude are people that actually come from London like themselves. You know what I mean? But they think, oh yeah, because you live in Margate, you, you're not smart enough. You know what I mean? You, you won't look into things, you know what I mean? You can just be talked to like a piece of dirt. And yeah, sometimes you just have to like correct them and show them that that's not how it is. You know what I mean? And I think, that, and then I've met like a couple of people that are up there, that all places, and they've been really nice and helpful. You know what I mean? And it's, it, you see, it's, it's that, you have to put that fine balance, isn't it? There's always one that's one way and one that's the other way. You know, but I'd say, um, it's been, it's been all right. I'd say, I'd say if they bring, if they come down here and they treat people like humans, then they'll start getting respect. But if, in, if they don't, then it's going to cause a rift. You know what I mean? I'd say, don't get me wrong, it's good that they're bringing the cash into the country, or sorry, into, into the country, into the, into the county, yeah? But you still have to be able to blend in with the people that you're moving into, you know what I mean? These people were here before you were. So that's what you've got to think, you know? Again, I think it's a double-sided coin. I think there's benefits because I think the fact that people are moving from London here is now means that some of the derelict shops are now being brought and are being you know, turned into shops and the houses around here are being, you know, they're being um, renovated and the Margate town itself is, you know, being cleaned up and looking a lot more pristine than it did a few years ago. But for people that live here, it does then mean sometimes that what the shops that were available to them, the local little shops, get priced out of the renting market so closed down they can't afford to run so they people that live here maybe feel that also the house price market that they won't be able to afford to actually buy here and will have to move out the area because the house prices have increased massively in the six years i've lived here it absolutely is and well there's there's two elements to this side i'm a business owner so I may say it differently to somebody that isn't a business owner. Um, there's a lot of people from London and other parts of the world that are coming in and buying properties and businesses, which on the surface of things appears great. And it is great, you know. Um, it's boosting the economy in the area. However, um, what that's doing is, you know, like you discussed with me earlier, it's pushing up house prices, it's pushing up rental prices um, the products in the shops their value is increasing as well it's, it's just a, a, a broad thing it's an issue uh, Thanet Margate doesn't offer many jobs so a lot of people they can't afford to do these things um, and they're isolated away also one thing that I have found the, the people that not all of them there's a collective group they're called DFLs um, and it's not people from London, it's a specific group of people from London that call themselves DFLs and what the problem with that is, is 
they will only mix and promote their businesses and welcome people within their community. So yet again, that causes another problem. The locals are being isolated away from their opportunities and their businesses, so it does cause a problem. And as soon as Margate was starting to recover from its demise and slowly return to its former glory, the United Kingdom was forced to go into a national lockdown due to COVID-19. An already unstable and uncertain economy based on tourism was completely shut down for just over a year. Margate was once again a ghost town. How do you think COVID has and will affect Margate in the short and long term? I think it's hit Margate really, really hard. Really hard because there was already a lot of shops around here struggling down the main street and in the town. They are really going to be pushed out. And the main stores that were available, like the big boots, that you know, they'd moved out to the big shopping centre. But a lot of those potentially are going to close now. You know, like all the Debenhams, there's loads of big chain stores that have closed down. So I think, job-wise, it's going to have a massive impact and also it has had a massive impact just on the health and different around here because it's a deprived area there's higher levels of people with poor health so this particular area was the margate was where the second the, the second <laughs> the kent virus came from that's where it originated was in margate so that happened because it's a deprived area, because people's health is like the health is, is worse here, so therefore they're more likely to get it. So I think it'll have a very long term impact around here, and I think it's something that will take Margate a long time to get over. Partly things like Dreamland. Mm. Dreamland was back, coming back, and now with all the changes with social distancing. How so places about, like that can manage and work and function and having what the big events? What about short term? How has that affected, you know, a, a traditionally seaside town that relies mainly on tourism? What would you say? I think it's, it's put scene. a massive amount of businesses out, like basically bankrupt around here. I think there are a lot of businesses that have been running for many years that have kept going through the hard times, just now on. And a lot of people have just gone, enough's enough. Because they've had to fight you know it's not been easy for many years and this is just like the final straw for a lot of businesses around here and they've just gone we're packing up and we're not we're stopping but then there's also some that are determined that they want to keep it going because it's where they live this is their community so you know despite many businesses being forced to close some held on by the skin of their teeth and whilst we're still recovering from the pandemic it appears as if margate may truly be healing I think if the government grants weren't issued, Margate would be a dead town by now because there isn't the money. People, residents, business owners don't have the money behind them. It's not like London, it's not like Brighton. However, the government has blessed us with these grants. So in terms of COVID, I think COVID may have actually helped a few people to be honest and it helped boost and regenerate businesses so I think when Covid is over the the local businesses and Margate potentially will be a best, better place than what it was pre-Covid. It's yeah I mean I don't think you, when the beaches have been open you see what what's happened bang straight away the beaches are packed last after the last lockdown the, the, like the first one straight away people on the beach so I don't think it'll have a great uh, uh, I don't think it'll have a great influence at all to be honest like I say people will always come down you know you get coach loads coming down Covid or not the Covid in the short obviously with the lockdown that stuff so in short term during lockdown obviously very very quiet like it would be in another town uh, I think from a holiday let uh holiday like you know people going on holiday i think it's going to be booming the next few years because less people going to go abroad they're all going to stay in in within within the uk i think and also with brexit i think a lot of people stay inside the uk 
So I think we, I think we probably have the best years to come, tourist-wise. And thanks to COVID, it's probably for me personally as a business, we've boomed the last two years. We, we, we've never been busier than we are now. Despite the positive outlook towards Margate's future, I think COVID has highlighted to everyone living in Margate, no matter their class or creed, just how important community and working together is. And I believe we can learn something from that as to how the people of Margate can work together to make it better for everyone. London business owners should be mindful of the fact that they are opening in an area where people already live and so should make a conscious effort to integrate themselves and not isolate into a single community. As long as they treat the locals with respect, then they should receive the same back. Whilst the locals should understand that most of the Londoners are trying to integrate themselves and it's only a small percentage who give them a bad name, so they should treat the DFLs with the same respect as they would treat each other. And I think everyone can learn that nothing good can come through isolation and separation and that we should come together as a community to make Margate a better place for everyone, locals, Londoners and anyone else who wants to come to Margate.